What's up, guys? My name is Marcus Huskins, and thank you for joining me. As always, if you're finding this content useful, please go ahead and do me a favor and hit that subscribe button, and I really appreciate your support. All right, so moving right along, I wanted to take a moment to talk about track-based automation versus part-based automation, or if you're coming from other DAWs, maybe it makes a little bit more sense to call it region-based automation or event-based automation. But in this particular case, I'm talking specifically about instrument parts versus the track level. Okay, so I've got a simple session pulled up here. As you'll note, we have an instrument part. Let me go ahead and bring it back to its default view. I've essentially just duplicated this using the duplicate complete function, which has given me two separate instances of the same plugin, and I'm using the same instrument part on both of them. So if we go ahead and we show our automation, you'll notice that we have some automation on this track over here, and this is for our filter cutoff. So if we go ahead and play this, you'll notice that the filter cutoff is following the automation that's written on the actual track in the arrange window. So that is the default approach, and I'd say that's the general approach that most DAWs take when writing automation. You have a track, you can write automation for any parameter on that track. Now let's talk about a different option that we have when working with Studio One. Okay, so I'm gonna select this track in this particular case. Let's go ahead and bring our instrument part back. It's unmuted, and in fact, we'll just go ahead and we'll make sure that this one is muted, but I still wanna have the automation available so that we can copy it if needed. So now if I go ahead and play this one, as you'll see over here, we don't have any automation written. So this is just playing at a static level here with my cutoff sitting still. Okay, so the general approach that we have when editing automation is you'll notice that if I, for example, click a parameter, that I can drag that parameter. I could drag it onto that track, for example, and then we would end up with that result, same as above. Another thing that we could do is right click and I could edit the automation. That'll give us the same thing. And last but not least, the way that I like to tackle this most of the time is simply by clicking and using either Alt or Option A, and that will do the same thing. All right, but let's take a look at a different approach. So if we click and you'll notice that we have that cutoff parameter available in the top left, one thing that maybe not a lot of users realize is that not only can we drag it to the track, but we can actually drag it to the music editor or the piano roll, whatever you want to call it, MIDI editor as well. And then we can actually create a cutoff part automation. Now, when I let go, I want you to keep an eye on what happens. You'll notice that a cutoff tab was added over here. Now this, in my opinion, is a much simpler shortcut to automating parameters for part-based automation. So we know that we can click these three little dots. You can search for the parameter that you wanna add, anything over here, we could click it, we could add it, and now it's been added, right? But for me, it is much easier to simply use the drag and drop and drag it right down directly into the instrument editor or the music editor. So now that we have this parameter available to edit, now we can automate that. So for example, I'm going to just borrow this automation and let's come to this track. Now we'll make sure we're clicking the cutoff parameter and let's just go ahead and paste this in. So now this automation is actually part-based automation versus track-based automation. If I look at my automation display here, there is no automation. This track is not in read mode. There's no automation that's been added because the automation is embedded in the actual instrument part or MIDI event or MIDI region, however you want to think of it. Now, this can have a lot of different advantages. I won't get into all of them in this video, but I think in general that this is a really great way to work with part-based automation versus track-based automation, quite simply because it allows you to kind of break some of the automation rules that we have that can be a, a little bit of a pain in the butt when working. And the end product in terms of how it reacts is essentially no different whatsoever. Let's go ahead and come back into our main view. Let's bring this up. We have an instrument part over here and you'll notice that we can see the automation that's been written and you'll notice that the cutoff is responding to this automation. Now, one thing that's a little bit different is if I move my cursor through here, we don't see this updated in real time as we do if we're looking at the main one where we've done the track-based automation, where this is now updating, this filter cutoff is updating in real time. But the benefit here is that we're not 
tied to this automation. We don't have to worry about the read mode. And the minute I press play in any parameter, if I was to press it from here, you'll see that this cutoff point will just jump up and it will start following the automation that's embedded in this instrument part. So this is really, really useful and it allows you to work really, really quickly. And for example, if I wanted to make some adjustments to this event, we could go ahead, go into our filter cutoff over here. Let's just use our option or alt double click to bring it into view. Then I could use all these tools that I'm used to having, like for example, option or alt T and I could modify this automation and make any adjustments to it. And you'll notice that it kind of moves freely from the one instrument part over here. If we keep an eye on our filter cutoff, you see that it's moving down, it's gonna move up again, it's gonna move down, and then here, it'll just drop right off. So in my opinion, a really cool feature that I figured maybe some of you don't realize is that we can do part automation versus track-based automation, and it can be really, really useful when working on your productions. All right, so that's all the time I have available for today. Any questions or comments, please leave them below. I will do my best to get back to you. If you're finding this content useful, please consider hitting that subscribe button, and I really appreciate your support, and we'll catch you in the next video. Cheers.